Hey guys, this is my Harbor Freight Swamped Bobcat. I put a Harbor Freight Predator engine in it. So it's a Predator uh, 670. Uh, 22 horsepower engine. Originally this had a Dutes diesel about 32. So we lost about 10 horsepower. It works though. And uh, this video will show you how to do it. And first let's get some footage of us using it. So... I haven't put the controls inside there yet, so we just turn it on back here. Go ahead and do that. So I did have to make a drive shaft, which uh, this video will show you how. Had to make engine mounts, which this video will show you how. And so, uh, yeah. What's this? A bobcat? Yeah. Let's see if we can predator swap this bobcat. Here's the predator engine. I've had this engine for like five years. It's got spider webs on it. Probably still runs. So yeah. What did I just drop to the ground? Was that a bolt? That pump has a tapered shaft. Okay. So, if you look at this gear, this slides on the pump it is slightly tapered for whatever reason. And so, at one point, I was going to do a Lovejoy connection. And if you see, I drilled that out with a stepper bit to get the same taper. It felt a little loose. And I was like, and you know what? I'm just going to go back with the original gear. And I took the original, this is the Bobcat part. And this is the original part right here that uh, goes onto your uh, flywheel, just like that Bobcat engine. And I took a uh, tractor yoke. You get tractor supply with a one inch, um, yeah, or maybe one and a quarter, I can't remember, and a U joint. And I had this welded. Now, these two are this is cast iron and that's cast iron. So if it was going to fail, it's going to fail right here. But I had a buddy weld it, and he's better at welding cast iron. So hopefully that'll be okay. So you got two universal joints. You got one right here and you got one right there. And so I'm hoping that makes the drive shaft long enough that it will clear <laughs> this. We're hoping. So what's next? Um, Mock-up. It's like I'm too high by like an inch. Okay, take her back out and do another shim. Okay. Oh! Yeah. So it looks like I'm a little high by like an inch. So uh, take this little two incher down and find a one inch board. I think we might be in a good position. I'll show you the drive shaft right there, going to the pump. It looks like we have enough room back here. All right, guys, welcome to the forgotten shop. Here we are. We're going to be building engine mounts for the engine swap predator engine into a bobcat and so i got this piece of metal i actually found it in the road a couple years ago it's like eight feet long it's uh two by two square tube and we gotta get to five inches so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut this at an angle so i can get a bolt to go through still without having to have a bolt that goes through the whole level the whole uh two inches so uh put it on the chop saw Cut it to lengths of the bolt pattern that's already on the machine, and uh, we'll build some rubber isolators. I'll show you guys how to do that out of a uh, old piece of rubber. Anyway, we have to grab this, set up our chop saw, and get our cuts started, and then that way we're making progress today. All right, guys. So these are the start of my engine mounts. So I cut them at an angle, that way I can drill, boop, boop, and I have to drill through all of it. Guys, that's how they're going to sit. Next are going to be some cross pieces, but before that, we need to bolt it down and make rubber isolators. 
they kind of keep the vibration down. Similar to this. See that's like a hockey puck made of rubber and the bolt sandwiches between it. Keeps the vibrations down. Keeps things from shaking loose. Now I don't have factory ones on this machine and I'm sure you could buy them, but we're going to make them. Um, this is a basically a tire wedge, tire chalk that I've used for years and it's finally broken. So we're going to use a Sawzall. It's about one inch thick, which is the thickness we need to give us an extra height. Use the Sawzall there, cut them into rather ugly chunks. I'm going to split it down the middle, zoop, and then split it down that seam, that seam, and then like that. Guys, let me show you how it looks. Those are my little rubber isolators I made. Bolt going through. See, that's why I angle cut it, so I can still get a socket wrench in there. Now that's bolted down. Next, I'm going to pull a measurement going this way and cut me two pieces, one on each side. So right now, this is at three inches with the space and everything. This machine is slightly crooked. It's lower on this corner. I think it was dropped. See my bolts? Boom. So I'm going to cut those pieces and then uh, figure out their spacing and then uh, tack weld them. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those next. And then, uh, yeah, so it's bolted to it. It's got its rubber isolator. That's the start of the engine. Um, we call it mounts. And before I tack weld anything, I'll have it make sure everything lines up and level the drive shaft from up and down, side to side, make sure it's as accurate as possible. But of course, there's yokes in there, so it can be slightly off. But I like to get it as close as possible. So yeah, next I'm going to figure out my spacing on this and how wide this has to be. And you got to remember, you got to get a wrench underneath there to put the bolt through, so all that debating it yeah like i could just go ahead and plop that on there line up the shaft and everything and uh drill my holes in that and then um use that to line up my welds for this this and this All right, so got the plate mounted. I ground off both sides. Ground that. I'm going to sit that all together, get the yoke lined up, and do my measurements a couple times to make sure it's centered and everything like that. And then when I feel comfortable, I'll tack it. Oh, yeah. She's set in there. Um, and then basically, next is just check all my measurements and then tack weld there and there. Backside, backside, also the plate to the those pieces. And then we'll be good for testing. So it's exciting. We're almost there. Battery, fuel system. Um, I think I'll just temporarily leave the controls on the back and just set the throttle to whatever I want it to. All right, guys, we're back at it. And so my measurements tell me the engine needs to come up about a half inch, if not a little bit more. Um, so what the answer to that is I'm going to make some uh, washers out of this flat bar. This is actually uh, stainless steel, or was. And so uh, I've used this scrap piece to try to weld, and my welds haven't stuck to it because it's stainless steel. So hell, it's going to be a good flat bar piece. So I already did all my lines. I'm going to drill first and then take it to the chop saw. Be that way I have something I can grab hold of while I'm drilling. And hopefully it'll go through there pretty easy. Hopefully. Got to build a bunch of spacers, and those spacers are going to go underneath here. So I'll loosen my isolator, lift it up, because I, I have enough play on the bolts length. And uh, put the bolt back down, be good to go, get my right setting. And then I just got to measure right to left again and make sure everything's good and tack her down. All right, 
right, guys. Spacers are in. Drive shafts where it needs to be. I measure this way, this way, every way to make sure there's not any, you know, drive shafting like that. It's straight. So now we're good to tack everything in. All right, a welder gave me a little trouble and I finally got the feet again. Welds, welds going down the side. Hooked up a battery, I just kinda wanna get a video of the drive shaft, make sure it's not bending a lot or anything crazy. Let's turn her over. She looks pretty balanced to me. So yeah, I'm happy with it. So what's next? Fuel system. So basically, the original fuel tank I will use, but temporarily I'm going to take out this air box and hang a little bitty gas tank I have over here somewhere. That one. Muffler. Um, there's the original muffler. And the plan is to take an inch and a half pipe and have them go to it. And then I could bolt that in from the back. I should have clearance enough to get it to this muffler right here, the Bobcat muffler. So yeah, so that's the plan. All right, guys, I've rigged up a gas tank. This is where the air cleaner used to be. It goes right into the fuel line. I do not have a lid for it. I do not have the exhaust lid uh, um, hooked up. So there could be a spark that comes from here, goes in the gas tank, and it kills us all. But I don't think so. I'm going to find something to put on top of there. Let's just see if it starts. Choke. Let's see, does it have a start? That's, that's an off button. Okay. Push the choke all the way in. I don't think we're getting fuel fuel or do I smell fuel I haven't ran this engine in like four years I bought it for a stump grinder it turns over though let's take off all these oops little plastic covers Bozinga. Oh. Is this the air cleaner? I smell gas. Gas line could be clogged up. I don't know. Full choke.
gonna take a splash of gas and just put it down there. Just a splash. Could be the fuel line. Come on, splash. There's a splash. Yeah. Okay. Smells like it hasn't ran in a long time. Make sure my drive shaft's still attached. I can't see. That'd be terrible if it just started and just threw it immediately. Probably gotta look at this fuel system. See why it's not running that way. I really do need to do the muffler for this thing. It's a lot of smoke. I did make a custom seat. Yeah. It's a couch cushion. Uh-huh. Give it less throttle. I totally think it's this fuel line. I think I need to see if there's jostle them. Fuel. <laughs> Maybe that helped. There's <laughs> my rag. Could it be? Okay. There's a fuel line going down to here. Take all this crap off. There's a lot of plastic. Oh, a leaf. There's a lot of plastic between me and here. I was looking at kits. I was gonna rebuild the carburetor proper. And they're like sixteen, seventeen dollars, and I found a car, a brand new carburetor on eBay for um, twenty one dollars. So I ordered it. So yeah, but uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get the muffler taken care of. We know this engine runs because you pour gas in it, it runs. It's it's a carb problem. So we're gonna go ahead and work on the muffler today. Um, I got these two pipes. This one I think is a little bit thinner, but it's actually thicker metal. Okay, I can see that. This one is kind of thin metal. So before we do anything, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do um, try to cut 
try to weld this in because I have one that I have to patch up. And that'll tell me if this metal could be too small to weld or too thin for me. And I'll turn that settings down to the lowest I can. And I'm just going to cut here, cut here, cut here, and fold the ends in and grind it and uh, try to weld it. And if it works, then we're pulling that engine. And um, those are the two, uh, the original muffler. I'm going to cut those off there and off there and then run them into this pipe, weld that around. And I just want the engine turned around so it's easier for me to mock that up. So, uh, yeah, let's just start by uh, cutting this and seeing if I can weld it. Because I might have to go with a thicker pipe, you know. Okay, so I just took my Sawzall, did some cuts, folded it down, ground it. Next is the weld. Start right there, that big hole. And uh, turn my welder down low, see if I can weld this cheap Chinese metal. Hopefully it's painted on the inside and outside. So, yeah! Alright, my welder's acting a little funny, so I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Looks like a monkey's asshole. Let me show you guys. Big old hole there. I think I've welded it up. Uh, I don't know if my mask is working because it doesn't seem to be dimming like it used to. <laughs> I'm blind now. But anyway, so next we're gonna cut it and I'm gonna blow into there and see if it somewhat holds. It'd probably have been better just to use that high heat JP weld. <laughs> that looks great, you know. But if it holds the exhaust, we'll be all right. So this is just basically a pipe that's going to go around back and connect to there. So it's got to pick up the two exhaust ports and uh, yeah. So um, yeah, we'll get ready on that. And then All right, so the, the new old muffler or whatever is bolted back on there. And to get my clearance, I need to cut it just right before the bend on each side. And I'll still be good, I believe. And uh, yeah. So those two dots represent where the middle of those pipes are. So I need to cut them. Now I need to drill a hole that's an inch and an eighth. Well, I got a stepper bit, so I put some electrical tape on it to show me where. The problem is that is longer than this pipe. So we're going to go in there until we hit the bottom of this pipe, and then we're going to back off of it and see how far we got to go because we might end up, I don't want to cut my stepper bit, but I do go through a lot of them. I could cut the tip off the stepper bit and be okay. I got plenty of other ones. I just need a short one. enough. I took it off about a half inch. I can't be over three inches sticking out. Um, I got a good eighth of an inch before that touches there. Kind of want to exhaust wrap this. Oh, yeah, we're we're good by like an inch, maybe. Yeah, I can back her out a little bit, I think. Of course, this one I didn't measure against. This one actually goes in a little bit. I could back her off just slightly, I think, and still have a good lineup. Yeah. So yeah, I want to get her away from that cover just slightly. So I'm gonna space her out grind everything and uh, tack her while she's on there that way she don't twist or anything and then uh, get her off finish my crappy welds and then uh, I got some exhaust wrap too 
Since we're all about safety, I put one of my work gloves over the open gas can there. So, yeah. Go ahead and weld this up, and uh, hopefully, I'm trying not gonna touch. Try not gonna touch the thin metal. Try not gonna touch the thin metal. All right, guys. So my welder's not really doing the thin metal like it should. As you can see, there's a hole in there. There's a hole in there, and then when I try to fix that, put a hole in there. So I might switch to my older Harbor Freight welder that does thinner metal better, probably. All right, I gotta let this piece cool down before I wrap it. So yeah, the smaller, cheaper, older Harbor Freight welder actually does thinner metal a lot better. Ooh, that looks rough. Yeah, ooh. Let's see, where's a good weld? There's a good one. Oh, there's holes in that. Okay, I need to tack that up a little bit more, those little holes. Boo, 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 boo. Oof. Yeah, she looks rough. <laughs> Ew, I'm going to have to do an air test on this. So in my testing, I found a pinhole leak there. It was apparently a hole that somehow rusted there, so I had to fill that in. Yeah, she looks gnarly, but uh, she seems to be tight now. Um, yeah. All right, guys, so here's my exhaust manifold I built. And um, cleaned it up, pressure tested it. And I've also uh, wrapped it in some, uh, it's like this, this stuff for exhaust pipes. My th reasoning is because it's kind of tight back there. I don't want a lot of heat back there. So, I, you know, it's supposed to dissipate heat or something. All right, guys. So I got the new carburetor installed. Dun, dun, dun. You see that? That mark is just where I was banging on it. And I was just thinking the float was seized, which it probably was. The old carburetor put back in the box. The box came with one spark plug, which is a, okay, and a new fuel filter. I like these style better because I can actually see the fuel. I'm going to install that. Uh, rotate the engine back and uh, hook up the exhaust, hook up the yoke, do the four bolts in place, and then we can maybe test it. All right, guys, she's back in, and that was a bear, and I hooked up the exhaust. I still got about an inch of play. Not hot because I haven't started it yet, so I'm going to show you all that. I'm gonna do that live on camera. There isn't any fuel in the fuel filter yet, so I probably have to prime it. Make sure it's is there gas in there. I mean, here's my flashlight. Ryobi. Yeah, there's gas in there. All right, guys. So if it does start, um, you know, it has less than like. 12 ounces of fuel, so nothing crazy is going to happen. But if it starts, I'm going to try to jump in it and drive it out. I don't I don't know if it's going to even start. I'm not going to put all the engine crap back on just to see if she'll test for me. All right. I did notice. Oh. Choke. That was a good sign. Hydraulics making some noise. A lot of smoke in the old exhaust, you know. Kind of maybe should have not used the old exhaust because maybe there's just a bunch of grease and shit in it.
hydraulic fluid. Like the drive shaft, uh, the universal joint came apart. Okay, smoke's gotten better as the paint cures off, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. At least it moved, starts and runs. <laughs> now it's stranded here until I can fix it. Well, all this crap has to cool down in the tall, dry grass while everything smokes. It'll be all right. All right so what I noticed first was the drive shaft was poking almost the bottom of the, we call it a universal joint. So that tells me that set screw, it wasn't loose, but there was enough play somehow for that to happen, which caused that to come off the shaft and that force um, blew apart our universal joint. All right, guys, I fixed it. Took the old one um, and uh, yeah, I just bought a new one. <laughs> There's a new one, there's numbers on it. So it's kind of getting harder to press these in, but I got them pressed in. And they come with these clips, but they really don't work on this application. Um, these can't go in any further, and there's not much of a ridge. So it would be great if, um, yeah. So the solution to that is, I'm gonna take some JB Weld and clean the surface with wax and grease remover and do a dollop of JB Weld. Or I could ping this edge over with a hammer thought about that but um yeah that's not the real reason why it came apart the real reason why it came apart was it slid on this shaft even though i had this set screw in all jb welded 
yeah, why is it when I always build something, my plans start out and I or try to be well planned and, oh, I'm going to make this a really nice build. And then three hours or how many hours I'm in, I turn to JB Weld to fix my mistakes. JB, JB Weld. I got some extra JB Weld. I need to find something to do with it. I know there's something in the shop that needs JB Welded. All right, back to the uh, Predator Swap into this Bobcat. And so what I determined was the gear uh, spline shaft wasn't all the way on there. So I got that on there right. I got it plumb too. And I went ahead and picked up this spacer. And that's going to keep it from coming out uh, and then falling off. See how that goes on the shaft? It's one inch. Is this one inch? Let me see. One and a quarter. So yeah. So what I'm going to do is put the engine back in, slide it all together, make sure everything's tight, uh, put a bolt in it, one or two, just so we know where we are, and then uh, measure and see where I'm going to have to cut that space, or it might be perfect. I'd probably not. Put the key in and everything like that. Or actually, I don't even have to put the key in right now. And then uh, after that, see how I'm going to have to cut that, reinstall everything with the key, torque everything down, and then we should be good all right, so the cut spacer has been put on. The key is on. Now it's time to reassemble. Um, a little about, probably about a eighth of an inch play back and forth, which I think, or about a quarter inch. I think that'll be okay. And if it breaks again, we're going to have to key it. We'll have to put shear pins and all that. But I think this will be good for testing. We'll see how it does. They're all back together. I took a little bit of uh, emery paper and cleaned the rust off. Because it was having trouble sliding on after, you know, however long I've let it sit. I ain't gonna lie to you. After it broke, I kind of took a little bit of time off of this project and worked on some other ones. So, I need to get this done. Hi right, guys. It's been put back together. Dogs and their little sweaters are whimpering at me. It ain't even hot. It ain't even cold. You don't need a sweater. You don't need a sweater. Anyway. It's okay. I put just enough gasoline in it so it won't start a fire or explode because a gas tank is iffy. Alright guys, so it hasn't broken yet. I'm happy with that. Um, so maybe my repairs were correct. Uh, next, I'm trying to get this bucket on there. It seems to be a little tight, so I'm going to try to sledgehammer it. Um, hydraulics are holding really well. Um, I just had to replace a fuel filter because it was just like cracked or something. So I put a brand new fuel filter on it. Haven't tried the starter since. I think I have about that much gas left. Let's see. Click on. Full choke. Just priming still. Thank <laughs> you. 